You are an entrepreneur, a professional, a speaker, or a coach. And although you've come a long way, it's time for you to take it to the next level. We've got you. This is the Author to Authority Podcast. We'll help you use authority and influencer marketing to build your business stronger and faster by publishing a book. You'll hear from guests that are thought leaders in sales, marketing, networking, communication, social media, promotion, and business leadership. Let's do it. This is the Author to Authority Podcast. And now your host, the extraordinary word ninja, Kim Thompson Pinder. Welcome to the Author to Authority podcast. And today, I am so happy to have Bill McCormick with us. And the reason why is we are going to be starting on his book. Actually, by the time you listen to this, we will be starting on his Mm -hmm. book, All Selling is Social. And I am so excited for this book because I've already been talking to Bill now for a while. And I know that what he wants to share in his book is going to help you as an entrepreneur to tremendously grow your business. So welcome to the show, Bill. Oh, Kim, thanks so much. I've been really, really looking forward to this, looking to get started on the book. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super pumped. So you may not know this or not, but if you're watching the video on YouTube, you'll see that Bill is wearing the Selling from the Heart t-shirt. And of course, you know that we've talked about Larry Levine many times on the show. He's been on the podcast. Well, Bill works with Larry. And so I know that what he's going to share with you today, you really want to hear. You just want to knuckle down, don't have any distractions, get your pen ready. Because he's going to share some nuggets with you that is going to help you take your sales to the next level. So, Bill, why don't you take a couple of minutes and just introduce yourselves, tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. This is the first time on the show, but it won't be the last. Yeah, thanks, Kim, and and thanks to to all your listeners. So, yeah, Bill McCormick, um, I was born at a very early age. (laughs) So, I'm... I'm 59 and I'm a dad. So dad jokes just kind of tumble out of my mouth. I don't mean them to, it it, it just happens. But, um, but no, I, I was involved in sales in like my twenties and thirties when I had no work ethic and I was just looking to, to, to do whatever I could do to get done, to go, to go home. And so that didn't work out really well for me. And also in my early days, early years in sales in the eighties, nineties, the sales training was basically like do whatever, say whatever you have to say to 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 get the sale. And a lot of the times it had to do with with you know what kind of perks could you give the person. So I was in the grocery industry, so it really wasn't about the cookies that I had to sell them and, and that their clients wanted. It was about whether or not I could get them. Um, tickets to the Yankee game on the third baseline or tickets to the Giants game at the 50 yard line. And, and I didn't play that game. I didn't like that game. I thought, you know, I'm a value seller. If I have a valuable product that your clients want, you should want to have it. And and so I didn't do well in, in sales when, when I was in my younger days. So fast forward a number of years and a number of careers later, my wife was in the print and promotional products industry. She worked for a company up here in the capital region in New York. That's where we're located. And at the time, I was a 911 dispatcher for a fairly busy 911 center in New York. And her boss died suddenly. He had been diagnosed with cancer, but things happened much quicker than they thought they would. And suddenly she was faced with this decision. We were faced with this decision of whether we were going to stay or we were going to go. And we really wanted to open our own business. And so we, she, she left that employer. It was just her and the boss. That was it, just the two of them. And his family decided to keep the business, even though they had nothing to do with it up until that point. And, and that was their right. And, and my wife just felt like, no, I want to do my own thing. And so we started and because I had a sales background, even though it wasn't a great one, guess who became the sales guy? You know, that <laughs> it, it, it was me. And so like on my days off from my 911 job, I go out and sell and began to look into what sales training was like then. So this is uh, 2013, quickly discovered LinkedIn, 
quickly found, actually, we had clients in Bermuda that my wife had worked with who found her on LinkedIn because they didn't have her email address anymore. And we we quickly discovered LinkedIn could be the place we could really make a difference and really build our business, which we did. And uh, I became a student of LinkedIn and began to use that in the sales process. And so we started our business in July of 2013 in July of 2015, just two years later, I was able to leave my 911 job and didn't even retire. I just quit and was able to walk away and go and work full time with my wife, which was great. And, you know, fast forward to a few years later where people that I'm networking with are asking me, hey, can you teach me how to use LinkedIn? And after about the fifth or sixth person asked me, I'm a little slow sometimes, Kim, I'm like, wait, <laughs> I could charge them to do this. I could like make money doing this. And so I, I got into LinkedIn training. I connected with Bryn Tillman from Social Sales Link, became her chief sales officer and worked with her for a while. And she, Bryn's actually the one that introduced me to Larry and Daryl because I needed to listen to podcasts because I needed to lose some weight and I listened to them. And I was like, wow, these guys get it. Like, this is how I think. It's all about the value. It's all about the relationship. It's all about really taking care. As Larry says, giving a rip. And um, yes. it was a, just about- And no two, empty suits. And no empty suits. That's right. And so it was about two years ago where Larry and I got on a call for the first time uh, on, on Zoom. Um, to this day, Larry and I and Daryl and I and Jackie and I have never met in person. And that's going to change in two weeks. And, and we're going to be uh, down in Fort Worth in, in the middle of October. Can't wait to do that. But but Larry and I just connected. You know, you, there's just people that you just connect with. And Larry and I, almost the same age. Uh, he's younger, but don't tell him I told you I said that. And <laughs> we we just we just became really good friends. And that led to me becoming a part of their community and really learning from them and really embracing the selling from the heart, uh, you know, the philosophy. And so uh, it was about the the end of 2021, just the beginning of this year that Larry's like, hey, listen, you know, we believe this is a movement. Would you consider joining us as a coach and trainer? And I'm like, I'm all in. And that's what kind of led me that journey led me to this whole idea that all selling is social because I came out of the social selling realm where, you know, you use LinkedIn and I began to see that there were these echo chambers in the sales training community. There are people that only say cold calling is all it works. That's all you So that's what an echo chamber is. Is that, that Yeah. So, so an echo chamber basically is a teaching, a philosophy, a point of view that that's all you believe and the podcast you listen to, the books you read, the people you associate with all reinforce that training. So that's where the echo idea. Um, you may see this on Facebook when it comes to um, politics, where certain <laughs> people only watch certain news channels, but it happens in, in sales training. So you'll see these people, cold calling is the only way. That's what you have to do. Nope, you can only go knock on doors and go visit people in person. Those people got a really rude awakening. Even the cold calling people got a rude awakening in March, April of, of, of 2020, right? Because yep. there was nobody answering the phone and they couldn't go knock on a door because you weren't allowed in there. But then there's there's people in the social selling, the LinkedIn training room that said, no, that's the only way to do it. You can only do it that way. And this is the only way. And then there's others say, nope, email marketing, that's the way, push a button, you know, set up your sequence, hit a button, scale it, send it. That's what we're... And I began to look at this and I'm like, we're missing the boat here because, yes. you know, all selling is social. I liken it to golf clubs in a golf bag. So if you're a golfer, you know that there are 14 regulation clubs in in a, in a regulation golf bag, you're never going to use your putter out of the tee box. You know, you're, <laughs> you're facing a 450 par four and, you know, you're not going to use your putter. Tiger Woods may be able to hit the ball far with his putter, <laughs> not Bill McCormick. And when you get on the green, you're not going to use your driver. What I'm saying, you're using the right club for the right situation. And it's the same with all of these different training philosophies that you have to use the right one. And so you have to be open to all of them. And, and yes. so, and there's a social element to every single one. Yes. Even people that don't think there's a social element to email or copywriting, there is. What makes an email sell? It's when you develop that relationship with the reader. Exactly. 
Exactly. And so it it really does. It comes down to relationships. So we have to make a connection with people. And when we made this switch to this virtual environment, many people didn't think that, okay, I need to treat people the same way I would as if I was sitting in front of them. And so because of the screen that's between us or the keyboard that's between us, I can do or say whatever I want. And it just, it ruined it for so many people. And what I say is you have to treat people in the digital space the same way as you would treat them in the face to face, because it is it is all social. Well, I'm going to stop you there for a second, because first of all, kudos to you to be able to run a business with your wife, because that is a stress that most marriages cannot handle. <laughs> well, she's the president and CEO, and I'm the vice president. It's all in knowing what seat on the bus you're on and <laughs> staying in that seat. I learned that, learned that very well. And You know, I've heard you talk about this before, and I think it's important for us to realize that we do have these echo chambers. We have Mm. these grooves of behavior and thought that we're in that as an entrepreneur don't serve us well. Right. I think that, you know, you've got to be open. I think like I think the pendulum swings both ways. There's always, you know, swings both ways, Mm -hmm. two sides Mm -hmm. of the coin. Right. So, you know, one side of the pendulum is everything is old school. You don't do anything on social media. You don't do Mm -hmm. email marketing, right? And then the other swings right the other way, which is, you know, old school marketing is dead and even email is dead. And, you know, you should only be doing social and everything should be automated. You should never have to do anything in person. But, you know, when I look at all of the, the gurus, And, you know, the really famous people, and I'm on all of their email lists, right? I watch what they do. All of them use email. All of them use social. But they also use the phone. Email is to get you to click on something Mm -hmm. for them to get your information so they can call you and sell you their products and services Mm -hmm. in person. Yeah. And, you know, you said it. It's understanding what works for you and doing that but being open to other ideas because mm-hmm. listen, I know, I know in, in probably, it was probably the spring of 2019. I can remember a webinar by four very famous sales trainers. And if I said their name, you would know them. And it was all against this whole social idea. Like, you know, you shouldn't be doing a social, the phone's the way to go. That's where you're going to reach people. And at that point in time, it was, and that was their audience, right? So they're selling to sales teams that, the average salesperson's got to do a hundred dials a day. And, and so I would talk to my compatriots in the in the LinkedIn training and social selling space and go, listen, you just have to understand that they're they're selling to a certain demographic. And so they have to teach that, that to that demographic. Well, come a year later, uh in yeah. April of 2020. All of them had LinkedIn training modules in their training. And some people would say, oh, they're hypocritical. No, they're they're adjusting to the market. They're adjusting to what's happening. So that worked until it didn't. And thankfully, they weren't so closed-minded that they said, nope, we're still not going to do that because we said it wouldn't work. We were saying that we were hoping and praying that. Yeah. And, you know, and even as the summer, you know, a year ago, right, we were hoping and then, you know, you, another surge. And I think everyone right now is kind of holding their breath, you know, what's. And so I think, you know, that whole word pivot, but being fluid enough and open minded enough, that's the big thing. Being yes. open minded enough to say, OK, I'm going to I'm going to try that. I'm against automation to to establish relationships. So I'm against automation on LinkedIn that sends massive amounts of connection requests. I'm against automation via email that tries to just pitch me, pitch me, pitch me, pitch me without knowing me. I'm not against all automation though. We use automation at Selling from the Heart. Um, You know, I use automation on LinkedIn to get out information. And I think that's that's where we have to understand is, is where's your personal break even point where's your personal like these are the parameters i'm sticking to with what i do as an entrepreneur and what works for you and i tell all my clients when i'm coaching them listen i'm going to show you a certain way to do something but if what you're doing is working do that i remember i was in las vegas doing a, a linkedin training class and a guy raised his hand it was for the promotional products industry because i came out of the industry and he said listen you know i'm having really good success cold calling i said all right what are your numbers? He said, I have about an 85 to 90% um, response rate. 
He said, so do I have to stop doing that? I'm like, no, whatever you do, don't stop doing that. You're not going to get that kind of return on what I'm telling you to do. By all means, be ready to do that. You know, and and that's one of the things you mentioned, the gurus. And sometimes we as entrepreneurs, we as business owners, we as salespeople, we get on this thinking that we we don't know what we're doing, but they do. So I'm just going to copy everything they do. Well, here's the thing. It works for them and their business model selling training. But if you're selling a widget, if you're selling podcast airtime, it might not work for you. So, so look at your situation and ask yourself, how can I make this work? with my clients. And and that's who you really have to think about. Because if all you're doing is pitching your clients all the time, I guarantee you they're not going to be your clients. If the only time they hear from you is when it's time to renew, yeah, there's going to be somebody else that's going to come along that's going to treat them better and they're going to be gone. And you're going to blame the competition when you really need to look in the mirror and blame that person because that person didn't treat that client the way they deserve to be treated. I like said about email marketing the only thing i slightly disagree with is i do use automation in my email marketing but Mm -hmm. what i do is i send out value filled emails so i send out a training sequence that's automated Mm -hmm. through my email system but it's not a pitch me fest it's um Mm -hmm. you know here i'm going to share teaching i'm going to share training and you know give them a good foundation you know throughout these email sequences and it's not that i don't say okay i've got things to buy it's just Mm -hmm. the main focus of the email and most of the emails i send out are not about buy this buy this buy this it's about okay let's let's share some value with you yeah and and that's what i that's what i was getting to is if if you're all you're doing is pitching an email but if you're if you are providing value and, and here's the thing who's value you know you so so in order to find out what your clients value you have to listen to them and you have to yes. determine that because value is in the eye of the beholder. On my LinkedIn profile, I'm listed as a coach. So I get a lot of, I'm inundated with messaging about coaches and how they can 10X my return and how they can get me 50 appointments a month with my ideal clients. And they don't even know my ideal clients and they haven't bothered to really get to know me, to find out yeah. about me and find out that that last month I transitioned to a different position in Selling from the Heart that now I'm di- the director of brand and sponsorships and partnerships. So I'm looking for partners to help further the podcast. And and they don't look at that. I've just fit a criteria. Um, I fit a title and a role. And based on that title and role, they're going to start shooting me stuff. After about the third one, I'll hit unsubscribe and I'm done. And oftentimes they'll try to message me on LinkedIn based on that role and tell me all that they can do for me before we've even had a chance to establish a, a, a relationship. And and that's the whole idea of all selling is social is that in email copy, in LinkedIn messaging and connection requests, in if you're going to call someone on the phone or meet them at a networking event is find out something about them. And, and really slow things down so that you can, you know, what you're basically doing is qualifying them and you're qualifying yourself to them. And that takes time. And that's why people don't like it. They want the easy button. There is no easy button. The easy button is called W-O-R-K. And that's exactly it. And it's not a lot of activity. So that's what we sometimes think. The more activity I'm doing, I should get better results. But what are you doing in that those activities? I, I love yes. um, Ian Koniak when he was on Selling from Our Broadcast. He talked about how we need to get rid of the KPI idea, you know, these key performance indicators, and talk about RGAs, which are revenue generating activities. If your activities are in generating revenue, then yeah, if you work hard, that's going to pay. But if you're just spinning your wheels over here with trying to come up with the perfect perfect email that you can send to all 5,000 people on your email list. Well, unless you have a really dialed in email list, that email is not going to do very much. In fact, it's going to do more harm than good. I I talk about, uh, I wrote an article not too long ago about scaling, and then I talked about micro scaling. So scaling is throw mud up against the wall and some of it's bound to stick. And, you know, if you're looking at email, if you're looking at cold calling, that's all scaling. And, you know, if your return is 1%, so you sent out 100 emails and you get one appointment out of it. I talk about instead of ROI, return on investment, what's your ROM? What's your return on missing? And on, and especially in this environment today, 
when people are trying to mass outreach on LinkedIn, your return on missing is very high. Those 99 people that you didn't reach with that message, they saw your picture. They saw the, your name. They saw the name of your company. It's very personal. Now they've identified you as a spammer. They may have even reported you to LinkedIn. And now you have a reputation. And it's very different than it was before. Because if you cold call me, Kim, I'm going to look at the phone and it's probably going to say potential spam. I'm going to ignore you. Even if you send me an email, I may see your name, but I know that's automated. I, I, I don't pay attention to that much. But when you do that on LinkedIn, your return on missing is very high because I'm going to look at you and go, yeah, no, I'm blocking. I, I don't want to talk to you anymore. And what's the value of a client lifetime? They miss out on me now, but then let's say I get hired by a bigger company. No, Larry and Daryl, not going anywhere. Uh, but I get hired <laughs> at a higher, another company with a much bigger, they lose access to me, to me there. So we have to be very, very careful. And, and yes, you're right. Hard work, slowing things down, being personable, giving a rip, having a conversation with somebody, being social and just finding out, hey, I I'm not here to sell you anything. I just want to know, Kim, what's going on in your world? What's going on in your life? And then taking it from there. So Bill, there's something I've been personally wondering about because like I've got the friendly side down. I've got the relationship mm -hmm. side down. Like I'm, you know, I'm always building relationships. Mm -hmm. Where I find it hard is, you know, you're building this relationship and especially on the LinkedIn message side, because I, you know, I'm ultra careful, but I don't want to come across as just buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. But right, you know, right. when you've been developing the relationship and all that, how do you transition? That's the one thing. Like I, you know, mm -hmm. I've been studying LinkedIn, you know, but I'm like, okay, when do I transition into the not a, a, like a sales buy my stuff, buy my stuff, but how mm -hmm. do you transition into a business conversation? Yeah, great, great question. And it's going to be different. I'm going to give you some general ideas, but for of each course. person, it's it's going to be different. And I'll tell you, so for me, one of the things I do, and you can't see because I've got my background blurred, but I've got a whole pile of selling from the heart books back here. And so soon there'll be all selling a social books all back there. And I'll throw one of Larry's in, but, but I look for an opportunity to have a conversation. That's, that's the outset I'm looking, I'm approaching in that way. So that starts with how I connect with them. So I don't connect with someone just because they're an ideal client. They could be an ideal client. I look for a context to do that, engaging on their content, seeing the kind of content they, they make. If there's a common connection that I know, you know, so let's say I'm not connected with Larry, but I'm connected with you. And I, see you're connected Larry I ask you to make an introduction that's mm -hmm. that's really good now once the connection's made now I'm looking to further the conversation most people they connect with people and then it's like okay now what I, I don't know what to do well you send a welcome message hey Kim thanks so much for joining my network on LinkedIn I'm always interested in meeting other people and finding out more it sounds like the work you do publishing books is so fascinating. Would you be open to a 15 minute conversation so I could find out more about what you do? You make it about the other person. Yeah. Scott Schilling says you come into every conversation, every encounter, high intention, low expectation. Mm -hmm. So high intention of what can I do for you? Low expectation that I'm going to get anything out of the deal. And as salespeople, we flip that around. I come in with, hey, Kim, um, listen, as, as a publisher, you're probably need blah, 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 whatever I sell. We help companies just like you. Um, we've helped these men at companies. We help them save this much money. Is Tuesday or Thursday good for you? Or here's a link to my calendar. Schedule a time with me. Like, whoa, wait, slow down. If you happen to meet someone just at the moment that they're getting ready to write a book for you, then maybe they might take a call with you. But if not, and, and I know for me, writing a book was kind of something I thought about, but I had to get ready. I had to build myself up to that. Like, so if somebody, and I've had some people reach out to me, oh, we help people write books and here. Thankfully, now I can say, I'm sorry, I have a publisher. She's the best. So you can, <laughs> you can, you can go away. But before I would be like, yeah, no, I'm not ready to talk about that. You, you know, so you have to look for a way you want to start a conversation and you do that around them. You know, have they posted some content that maybe you disagree with that you want to have a discussion about? Can you provide value to them? Like, do you have a PDF that talks not about what you do? Like for you, do you have a PDF that shows how business owners who have written a book 
have been able to increase their reach or their influence on social or their bottom line or whatever, that's not you saying it, but you have government facts or a nonprofit that says these things. So you could say, hey, Bill, it was great connecting with you on LinkedIn. Hey, have you ever thought about writing a book? Question mark. I have some really neat research that talks about the benefits to small business owners. Let me know if you're interested in that and I'll send it over to you. Don't just send it because that's spam. They didn't ask for it. And when you do that, now they're opting in. So now I say, wow, Kim, that's amazing. I'd love to read that. Then a couple of days you reach back. Hey, Bill, what did you think of that? Hey, I'm just curious. This is a Larry Levine line. Hey, I'm just curious. Would you be open to jumping on a call with me to talk about that? I'd love to get your insights and your feedback on it. No, no pressure, right? So you kind of let them off the hook. Just just saying, hey, are you open? You make it very matter of fact, because the more desperate you are, the worse it's going to go. But if you make it matter of fact, people, oh, yeah, sure, I'll jump on a call. And then when you're on the call, again, you're just providing insight, value, you're finding out their opinion, and you're waiting for a moment where you might be able to say to them, where you would say, so Bill, it, it sounds like maybe you've thought about writing a book. Well, yeah, maybe. Okay, well, hey, listen, would you be open, just curious, would you be open to us scheduling another call where we could dive in a little bit deeper and I can give you some idea of what that might look like? Yeah, sure. And here's the key. Schedule that right then and there. Don't yeah. say that, okay, I'll send you my scheduling link or, hey, great. Before we jump off, if you got five minutes, can we nail that down now? Because my time, my schedule is being booked. Th that's my main goal now in every call I'm on is setting up the next step before I get off yes. the call. Because that's the key. Because people are busy. We worry about this ghosting thing. It's not that people are ghosting us. It's that they're just, they live busy, busy lives and they forget. Well, sometimes they are ghosting you if you're not doing things properly. <laughs> That's true. I'm, I'm, I'm giving everyone the benefit of the doubt, but, but you're absolutely, you're absolutely right. Some of you are being ghosted on purpose and not because it's almost Halloween time. So Bill, I want to just transition here because you've just shared a ton of value. And I think people are going to have stuff to be pondering about and, mm -hmm. and thinking about after this episode, but I want to transition because we always want to talk about your book. Now, mm -hmm. this is a first for the author to authority podcast. Cause usually by the time my clients come on, they're a good way through their book or they're launching their book. So we're doing something a little different today. Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking to you about your book before we, we even start it. So I want to talk to you about a lot about what have you been thinking and feeling as we are getting ready to start this process? Well, I, I'm excited. I'm a little overwhelmed. You know, it, it can be a little daunting to, to, to do it. But these are ideas I've had in my brain for about, well, we're going on like seven, eight months now that have been really per percolating. And, you know, with your feedback, and of course, Larry's really encouraged me to write on a regular basis. So I write it, I write a newsletter on LinkedIn every week. And that's really helped me flesh a lot of this stuff out. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's, it's kind of been empowering, because I really feel like one has helped the other. So the whole idea of the outline and the structure of the book has helped me write. And then as I'm writing, I'm getting more ideas for the book. And, and so it's kind of this, this circle, which is kind of neat because the all selling is social is a, is a circle of arrows that that's like my logo. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of neat to kind of see that how one feeds into the other. And uh, my, my, my creativity has really has really increased because of this process, not just in the writing of articles, but in the content I've been able to post yeah. uh, in my interactions with clients. It's it's really helped me to provide more value for them. So so I, I'm really excited to get to get started. And you know what? I've been seeing Bill's articles a lot of times before they go out. And so I can tell you, audience, if you can connect with Bill on LinkedIn and you go read those articles. They are valuable, valuable, valuable information. So my audience knows I usually ask the question, what was the good, the bad, and the ugly <laughs> about publishing your book? But obviously we can't do that question yet. So let, let's change it a little bit. So I'm going to ask you two questions. What are you looking forward the most 
in this publishing process. I'm looking forward to most of the email I get from you and the team that says, "Hey, all right, we're all done. We're ready to go. We're, <laughs> we're going. We're going. We're going to print." That that's that's what I'm looking forward to to the most. Second to that, a close second is just. I know how much I've learned just since I've started writing more. I'm really excited to learn how much I'm going to learn more. I'm going to learn as we progress through the through the process and and the accomplishment of saying I'm a published author. Okay, now here's the other end of the coin. What are you dreading the most about this process? I I can't say there's anything right now that I'm that I'm really dreading because the because let me tell you, audience, Kim makes this process very easy, and it's a step by step. And so when I first started thinking about writing a book, that was very daunting. The idea of, of even coming up with a structure, which you helped me do and, and provided clarity around. So, so I can't say that there's anything that's very daunting. Um, I'm curious of how long it's going to take. And nobody knows, right? Because we, yeah. we, we really need to get into it and see it. So that's the one thing that's the question in my mind is like, okay, how how quickly can I get this done with quality? And I know that you won't let it go out until it's completely all yeah. quality and the best. So, so even in that, that thought, it's like, it's going to happen when it happens. And so I'm a man of faith. So I know that timing, it'll happen when the timing is made to be right. Well, I will warn you now, Bill, the first two <laughs> chapters take the longest mm -hmm. and it seems like you're not moving anywhere, but the first two chapters, we laid a really strong foundation of working together, understanding each mm -hmm. other. So, you know, usually that's where it's like, come on, can we just, can we just do chapter three? Nope. Nope. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Well, so it, it's good to know that ahead of time, you know, so, so it sets my expectations at the right level. So Bill, I know that you've shared a lot of great information today. What's the best way for people to connect with you if they want to learn more about who you are and what you do and, you know, take advantage of some of your teaching and your trainings? Yeah, the best thing they can do is connect with me on LinkedIn. That, that's where I'm most active. Just do me a favor. When you connect with me, click on the click on the button that says more and, and do that note. You know, there's a send a personal invite, send the note and just say to me, hey, I, I heard you on Kim's podcast. I'll be sure to, to accept you because if you don't do that, you're going to get a message back from me. This is automation um, that says, why do you want to connect with me? Because I, I want to know that I don't just add anybody. But if you say you heard me here, you're in and uh, then they can see my content and, and we can go from there. Well, thank you so much, Bill. I'm excited about starting your book and working with you on it. So this has been Bill McCormack and Kim Thompson Pinder on the Author to Authority podcast. If you have enjoyed today's episode, can you do me a favor? Can you share it out? Share it out on social media. Tell your friends about it. Tell other entrepreneurs. If, if an episode really strikes you, let other people know. That is the best favor that you could ever do for me as we grow the author to authority podcast so i want to say thank you so much for listening and we'll see you on the very next episode you've been listening to the author to authority podcast the extraordinary word ninja kim thompson pinder has helped over 200 entrepreneurs professionals speakers and coaches write and publish their books that have become incredible marketing tools for their business and many of those have gone on to become Amazon best-selling authors and have used their books to land high-level clients and get on big stages. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. And we'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hit the website at www.author2authoritypodcast.com. See you next time.